so uh, i will try to tell you as what is this forest genetic resource so for the general benefit generally it is uh, abbreviated form we generally use that fgr and uh, sometimes we say grm forest genetic resource management now the forest genetic resource uh, is generally the genetic variation in the trees of potential or present benefit to the humans now if you go go to the forest uh, there is large number of uh, interspecific or intraspecific variations at the genetic level also you will find the number of different gene combinations will be there and constantly it will be in the process of evolution so there is lot of variations available in the forest so our aim is just to cap to whatever excuse me sir source variations are available hello sir can you make it a, a presentation mode sir it is not in a presentation mode sir f5 you can press so that it will come to a presentation mode what is that sir? full screen full screen sir i am here full screen. full screen sir just type f5 sir just type f5 in your monitor sir press it. yes just press f5 sir is that thank okay. you yeah thank you sir and uh, Forest generally denotes a stand because generally when we are talking of the FGR, we actually mean that woody plants. Generally, mostly the woody trees, shrubs, or the lianas or the woody climbers. So generally, forest means. So I don't. Uh, uh, thereby, I don't mean to say that the herbs have got no importance. There are many uh, medicinal uh, herbs which are available in the forest floor. But generally, we talk about the. forest means it do not say stand or a population or a landscape of the trees outside the forest and typically all the other associated with the plants may be shrubs or the climbers uh, as i was telling you genetics uh, uh, refers to the variation of genetic material or the uh, different uh, uh, gene variations at the different levels variation between the species variation between the population within a species so for example tectona grandis occurs uh, in a large uh, part uh, natural population of teak also occurs uh, so you find the variation between the population within that teak and variation between individual trees within the population i hope i am clear the variation between the species within the species there are several populations which are available and therefore the variation between population within that species and within that population also there are number of individual trees and we will find a uh, uh, lot of variations are there now the largest variation is between the species that's why we have not large number of species and therefore we are very concerned uh, that the loss of the whole species uh, uh, will lead to the most dramatic loss of the nature of species because these are the variations which are taken into considerations for the future uh, Needs. So, for example, there are wild uh, uh, accessions of the rice which are available, and now whatever the paddy we are growing throughout the country, they are basically uh, these uh, uh, some of these uh, wild races, uh, and they have been domesticated, improved, modified, uh, etc. Et now, uh, so therefore, the resources refers to the use of these genetic variations. in the broad sense as stated above considered to be the potential value for humans at present or in the future so whatever uh, the genetic resources are available in the forest like tea i will take the example of the tea a lot of work has been done basically what we have done is that we have screened uh, in andhra pradesh particularly the different populations of the tea uh, and tried to find out some uh, uh, some best uh, uh, we call them as the candidate plus trees you can call based on the phenotypic appearance or the general morphological appearance uh, we have screened the populations after doing some zones within the distribution of the tree and then try to put it uh, in a multi locational trial and then try to shortlist five of the best productive tree clones after 29 years right and then those five we try to uh, uh, propagate in a large number 
spreads and mass propagation to the micro propagation. So that's how we use the genetic resource of the teak in the species, some populations we have screened and some five individuals we have selected. And then we have tried to multiply the tissue culture method. You can do it through other micropropagation methods also, but this is most uh, economical method uh, so far as uh, cost for plant is concerned. We produced around five lakhs of trees Critically, very uh, high productive clones. So that is what uh, I am referring to that the resources in the wild populations must be available, must be preserved uh, for the future generations. And uh, uh, the genetic diversity present in the thousand of the forest tree species constitute an intergenerational resource of vast social, economic, and environmental importance. Now, why I am saying so is that. In the forest genetic resources, if we do not preserve it, there is nothing to pass on to the next generations uh, or uh, the subsequent uh, exploitations of these genetic resources for the economic benefit. So the aim of the genetic resource management is to maintain conditions in which the genetic uh, uh, structure of a species can continue to evolve. Now let's say that uh, we keep those variations in the forest without any disturbance. So the nature the selection pressure of the nature actually plays a role, and that's how a species is evolved within that uh, on, within that uh, particular uh, ambience. So at the same time, management for conservation aims at reducing the rates of genetic resources. Uh, as you are all aware, most all these uh, forest tree species uh, are long rotation species or long live. They actually live. Uh, 100 years to 200 years, let's take the conifers or even the uh, teak or even the shawl, the major, major, what you call uh, economical uh, tree species, they are very long lived and they're highly heterozygous. What heterozygous means, so there are two different sets of uh, alleles which will be present uh, for a particular gene. That's how it is called heterozygous. When it is inherited, uh, one from the mother and one from the from the father, in a sense, mother seed bearing tree, another is pollen uh, donating tree. That's why they are called the highly heterozygous. And uh, 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 they have developed the natural mechanisms to maintain high levels of uh, interspecific variations, uh, such as high rates of outcrossing and the dispersal of pollens and seeds over wide areas. Uh, that's one of the characteristic of uh, forest trees, heterozygosity, and also the high level rates of uh, outcrossing uh, between one individual of the same species with uh, another individual of the uh, same species, usually facilitated by the dispersal of pollen, either by the air, case of the conifers, or by different level, uh, different types of insects, which are highly specialized sometimes in the species, and the uh, dispersion of the seeds uh, over a large area. These mechanisms combined with the uh, local environments, uh, uh, which are often variable in both time and space, have contributed to the evolution of the forest species, uh, uh, which sometimes actually become more stabilized in a particular kind of climate, what we call it as the climatic climax. In the semiculture studies, we might have read the climatic climax of a particular uh, uh, ecosystem or the forest type. Uh, what here it is very essential in case of the teak or in case of the eucalyptus when we have first started this clonal multiplications of the eucalyptus plants for high return you know, in a lesser period of time. What it has started from under the base uh, uh, to start with. Because uh, when you actually, uh, uh, when you actually um, move around uh, natural populations of the eucalyptus. Basically, eucalyptus has been brought from uh, the different provenance of uh, uh, Australia, uh, and it was introduced in India. And then subsequently, in different different parts, we had got some plantations of different provenance. Fortunately, uh, Andhra Pradesh had got uh, uh, the background of introducing the different provenance trials of uh, uh, Queensland mainly, and the Cairns, uh, uh, New South Wales, 
they have introduced here way back in 1970s or 1980s. And uh, what we have done uh, in that is that we try to find out uh, uh, the, let's say, uh, eucalyptus sterility cornice or eucalyptus tamilgulensis. We try to find out within that species and uh, what are the interspecific genetic variations. We have fixed certain criteria of uh, selections. Say, for example, the dia at the base, a dia at the stipe, height. Uh, there are several other characteristics, uh, the fiber uh, characteristics, uh, the vesicle they were used for the paper and pulp. So we have tried to uh, fix certain of these uh, attributes and then try to score uh, those selected trees. molecular uh, level of species to try to uh, uh, what you call uh, uh, clone them and put it in different agroclimatic and then we find that there are certain plastic clones which actually uh, perform uh, uh, in all these agroclimatic the best clones and then propagate it through this uh, what you call uh, sir, sir, apna video of, of, sir, apna video of sir. Sorry, I you to the system. Uh, I, I am doing it. I'm doing it. Right. Video may Is that okay? Officer, yes, yes, yeah, yes. Uh, we are okay. Presentation is there, you may continue, okay. sir. Please, sir. Okay. yes, sir. Yes, you can continue, okay. sir. Thank you, thank you. Ah. So, therefore, uh, 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 this, this is the importance of the interspecific genetic variations. Uh, uh, and that is how we have explored uh, the populations and uh, tried to find out the best genetic variations so far as that productivity of the eucalyptus uh, clones were concerned. We did this same same type of exercise for the for rojo uh, for melina and uh, for the casuarina and also to some extent for the bamboo. So far, uh, so far as the Andhra Pradesh Forest Department uh, or well, Andhra Pradesh Forest Department was concerned and released number of clones. Of course, then ITC Badrachalam, of course, has released uh, a nationwide uh, clones. Everybody, everywhere had uh, used that. Subsequently, we also tried to do this uh, type of exercise based on the interspecific genetic variations with regards to the, uh, the myriad species, which grows mostly in the Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, and part of this uh, Himachal and then Northeast. Uh, areas. Uh, so, in general, uh, the uh, implementations or the design of the forest conservation programs are based on the attributes of the ecosystem and thus little attention is given to the diversity at the species and gene levels. Generally, in the forest department, I am talking of the forest department. I am not talking uh, a high-level scientific institute, but as a forest department, uh, what we used to do is that uh, we try to find out uh, some of the best ecosystem where the bio, uh, where the biodiversity is very high or the tree diversity is very high, and therefore we try to, in fact, uh, preserve that particular uh, ecosystem, right? Uh, in that particular area, many of such uh, things uh, are actually uh, inside the PA areas, which is a uh, little much more protected uh, uh, compared to the general reserve forest. 
So, but we have not given uh, that much attention to the species of gene levels. I mean to say here uh, is uh, when I am talking of the species level, we have not identified the species uh, in a very scientific manner. Prioritize such and so. Level, this gene combination is quite is, has to be actually observed. That kind of work has not been done uh, uh, to a large extent. Of course, recent past, uh, the ICFRE has started uh, implementing one All India, um, FG, uh, what is that called? All India uh, FGR uh, uh, program. Uh, and then in which uh, they are trying to uh, in fact, uh, prioritize certain species and then trying to uh, actually document uh, and uh, do some kind of exercise. They are in a very preliminary stage. Uh, generally, when you are going to that molecular level and individual species, as I told you, species level variation is one. Within this species, there will be a lot of populations. So, what is the variation within the populations and also Within the population, there will be number of trees, and therefore, within the tree, between the trees, what is actually the variation? So these are possible only to actually have got that uh, studies, etc. For which there is a lot of uh, funds uh, uh, are required, and also the resources uh, of uh, like manpower also is required. Trained scientists. Uh, to work at the species and gene level, uh, uh, it, it is required. So because, and after that, you have to set up the priorities and the, uh, you have to actually be uh, uh, quite good uh, in new uh, markers and all other things. And also some new tools such as uh, uh, the, the geographical information system, and you have to do certain kind of modeling and molecular markers. And uh, uh, nonetheless, we require uh, a quite intensive field work. See for yourself uh, that these are the different, uh, so far as the phenotypic things are concerned, you cannot uh, proceed further. Uh, Oh. Ah, yeah, yeah. Is it audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it audible? Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Please go ahead. Sir. Now, uh, after giving the uh, uh, what you call the basic uh, concept of uh, is uh, FGR. I'm just trying to indicate here uh, uh, what are the drivers of erosions or threats to the forest genetic uh, uh, resources, which is basically mostly for the trees. The first and foremost thing, I just tried to, uh, what you call, jot uh, uh, down some of these important things. There may be several other things. So the first uh, most important thing is the land use changes and the human activities. Now, as you are aware that uh, uh, unplanned uh, uh, land use changes and mostly the deforestations uh, are the main causes uh, of these uh, uh, genetic erosions of the forest uh, tree species. Uh, land use, when I say that is loss of forest to conversion culture, that is the more dominant, which we call that encroachment of the forest and uh, the plantation forestry uh, all forest of so present in this uh, uh, training program uh, the preparation going in a large scale needs to be actually involved to a large extent Because uh, the time was there, which was to, it was only teak plantations. 
still sufficient indications was uh, the site uh, actually gave us uh, that the teak is uh, not favored uh, in the plantation program in the forest because that site conditions have changed quite a lot. That initial boost in the teak plant uh, is not seen in many of the planted uh, areas. There are a number of reports in that area. Peak has been left now mostly to the to stimulate the natural you must understand here in a particular area nearby forest what are those uh, uh, what you call species available whether they economic cost in the uh, climatic climax so maybe some secondary harm maybe are associates which may not have any role to which may not have any economic importance like lania like caria arborea like garuga pinata like dalborgia paniculata they do not have any value so far as the economic value is concerned right but then uh, they form a part of the uh, community in the uh, forest. So, therefore, uh, you have to also do that. Maybe some of the uh, edible wild fruit bearing species, and definitely 5% of the plantation stock must be with the local bamboo species. That's how actually we had developed a model in uh, Andhra Pradesh and subsequently we carried out uh, in our uh, Telangana under that uh, restoration of the graded forest. So, therefore, uh, I am uh, uh, sincerely appealing to the young foresters. To, uh, to bring in some change in the nursery programs of the different species and thereby the plantations uh, will naturally, the composition of the plantations will be changed. And uh, land use also in the northeast area and in many parts of the agency areas, the cultivation is one. And of course, the development of infrastructures. So, uh, sometimes it is very difficult, so we have to have a kind of uh, a balance between the development and the conservation. So, and uh, Telangana, for example, uh, large areas have been diverted for irrigation. So you have to strike a balance between that. And uh, uh, then number two is another uh, drivers of erosion of uh, uh, these uh, uh, variations in the forest is replacement of the native forest uh, with plantations. Earlier, if you remember, the old foresters are uh, more uh, uh, acquainted with that. We used to do the steep plantation under the conversion planting, uh, conversion plantation working circle, right? So natural forest is being felled, leaving around 20 to 20% 20 of this natural forest. And then we used to plant the steep. Shame is the case with the, the south. And then the time. So, happy beach which may have a chili jar, yes, sir. And therefore, they were issues in the is it clear now? It is getting disconnected. Is it clear? Which, which, so, right, okay, uh, therefore, the another thing is the forest. Uh, now, now another thing is the forest fragmentation. Uh, 
basically the fragmentations uh, causes uh, uh, isolations of the tree populations. Once a road goes, and if it is sufficiently in width, irrigation will find the populations of a particular species are uh, separated. That's basically forest fragmentation. And uh, number two is that uh, when the population size is less, uh, there will be a tendency for the inbreeding. And uh, because of the inbreeding <laughs> in a uh, small population, and, uh, you will find uh, the uh, hybrid population. and climate change, of course, is one of the things which are several reactions uh, then of course this undocumented and uncontrolled movement of the germplasm from uh, one place to the other and uh, second thing is the native forest uh, management uh, that is your, uh, generally we do all these kind of things that the forest regenerations, particularly the forest fragments interspersed in the cut landscapes and highly selective logging and the forest management practice practices. Generally, in some of the places we use the fire as a management tool, uh, bridging regimes, thinning operations, and uh, sometimes we introduce different kind of animals. And of late, we have uh, actually uh, come up with uh, a, a new kind of uh, a problem uh, which is causing a lot of problem to the genetic uh, variations within the forest, invasion of uh, exotic weeds like lantana or the chromolina or the micrania or the hippie suaviolence, etc. They actually spread it such an aggressive as uh, many, many areas. Uh, and uh, no other species actually will uh, be able to survive in that uh, particular things. The best example probably could be the Bandipur uh, Tiger Reserve uh, in Karnataka. And uh, the third uh, thing is selection and breeding programs, which actually, uh, uh, in order to have uh, a good breeding program, we have to have a good populations in situ, in situ means in the wild, so that uh, at different uh, time, uh, you can take some accessions from that uh, and can uh, include in your, uh, what you call, if you are doing a progeny trial, for example, the FG, the first generation progeny trial. When you go to the second generation progeny trials, after culling down some inferior uh, families, then you want to have uh, some more uh, accessions from your wild populations. Right, so thereby you can improve that uh, genetic status or the genetic gain of that particular species. So, conserving a such uh, in situ wild population of that particular species is uh, very very important uh, because nature also will be making some kind of uh, uh, changes or the variations or. Uh, getting adapted to the different kind of climatic conditions, like your virus, which is where uh, the Corona virus is, uh, in fact, COVID-19 virus also is taking up different uh, forms, uh, different uh, type of forms, uh, because it is also evolving, uh, depending on uh, what you call the, uh, the circumstances or the environment in which uh, it is growing. So therefore, same is the case with the native species. So therefore, it is ex extremely important uh, to under that uh, uh, in the natural population. Now, this is uh, what I understand. Uh, if at all the state forest department, now many forest departments in the country, uh, actually, although we have got uh, an All India coordinated GRM project, which is by different uh, regional centers, uh, but to be very candid, uh, Many of the forest departments probably they are not much aware of this FGRM. Uh, it is only confined to the regional ICFR Institute. So since uh, IFS officers are uh, joining this program, 
I would request to understand this FGRM and try to make a small kind of uh, uh, document uh, as to how to go about it after understanding the concept and all that. Uh, of course, ICFRE also must have prepared uh, some kind of uh, a strategy plan uh, to implement this FGRM uh, over a long period. But still, I just wanted to uh, jot down some of the uh, things. You have to, the elements of this strategy should include the objectives of this FGRM as to why you want to do it. First of all, you must identify the problem. Is there really a need that uh, there is a uh, forest genetic resource conservation program should go in our own state? If at all, list of these target species, which are such species. Because forest, we have got so many large number of species are there. I am only talking of woody trees. For example, woody trees also, there are so many, like I told you, then you have to prioritize such species. If at all, uh, uh, we are uh, convinced that uh, forest genetic resource uh, is to be conserved uh, for the posterity uh, for the different uh, purposes. Uh, so you target those species based on certain criteria. Like I told teeth. Uh, Similarly, many states have got certain species. Uh, uh, Acularia, for example, the Adalocha is also a tree species of the northeast area, which uh, is of much significance. Say, for example, Yoskleichira uliosa of the Jharkhand. For example, uh, uh, the, there is one species uh, which I wanted to actually mention uh, here, uh, that plant called Salacia. It has got two three species, Salacia reticulata, oblonga, microsperma, etc. etc. Uh, so this Salacia is being the uh, it's a woody climber kind of thing. It's being largely uh, uh, cut from the forest of Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka, and then its distribution goes even up to the uh, uh, this is basically an eastern guard species, uh, also partly in the western guard, and it goes up to the Koraput of Odisha. Uh, systematically, this species has been exploited from the forest area to a large extent. Now, can that be a target species for the conservation of the genetic uh, uh, resource? So, you have to fix certain criteria as to how to select species from area to area. You must actually change. For theoretical purpose, you can list down hundreds of three species without doing anything. There is of no use. So, my only uh, suggestion should be. Uh, select some of the uh, three species uh, which are not in very high number. So I will also touch upon that uh, the criteria as to how you should uh, select and agency and organizations uh, to be involved in this whole exercise. Now, since we have got the ICFRE and we have got a uh, large number of uh, skilled scientists who have been working in this, so therefore you have to actually uh, they are the best agencies wherever uh, you are located. Your state uh, uh, is uh, uh, you know, the, the regional institute of ICFRE, wherever it is located, they could be one of the best agencies. Otherwise, some local universities also. And uh, uh, you have to develop what is the mechanism for facilitating the collaboration between these uh, institutes or the agency. And uh, these partners, so you have to, after knowing down, these are the works which are to be carried out. Uh, then you have to distribution of these tasks among the uh, partners. What's more important is since it's a new subject, uh, there should be a manual which has to be developed. There should be a guideline which has to be developed, which uh, I believe the ICFRE must have done by this time because this uh, All India Coordinated Research Project on this subject has been running for last uh, a few years. So by this time, they must have uh, already done uh, about the general guideline because state forest department officers, uh, they are not much uh, actually uh, aware of that. So in order to improve their awareness, the methodology part, uh, the criteria procedures, uh, evaluation patterns, uh, uh, they're, they're the, the manual is mostly important. And uh, these are the strategy, uh, the, these are the uh, specific, specific action plan. Uh, is uh, what you call FGR uh, uh, conservation strategy has to be developed for uh, individual species, species specific after you actually finalize certain species. Now, the first point what I uh, want to focus is that 
you have to do an assessment uh, of the genetic or gene ecological variation. I'm just trying to uh, uh, you can substantiate this uh, genetic and gene ecological. Now, the genetic variations, a layman, by just ocular estimation, cannot give uh, any information. Similar the gene ecological variations. Gene ecological variations means uh, this is the variations between a ecological zone. There will be certain populations, and within such populations, there will be some trees. Uh, and what are the variations between these trees and another trees of the another population? Right. So these are generally genetic variations can be done through these uh, molecular uh, uh, tools. What you call uh, uh, marker studies and all that. Uh, is those institutes uh, they may be having forest department. We do not have such kind of uh, uh, instruments uh, to know that. Uh, but as I am uh, always uh, as a forester, uh, we have done all the clonal forestry, two or three forest species, and some of these commercial eucalyptus, casuarina mostly, and then Melia dubia. Uh, we have done it through only the assessment through. Phenotypic uh, uh, variations, so phenotypic observations means you have to jot down certain criteria, certain parameters, uh, and then you have to score it. Uh, and then, of course, the volume you have to do it, uh, straightness of the stem depends on the type of use uh, what you are doing. In fact, uh, I just wanted to inform to this uh, gathering that we did also uh, under the program of domestication of wild fruit bearing, edible fruit bearing species. A tamarind one program we have done, and neem one program we have done, in which we have done this chemical analysis of the uh, tamarind populations, whichever are growing throughout that undivided Andhra. Mostly they grow in actually the Sanantapur, Chitpur district of Andhra Pradesh. Uh, and then try to take out those uh, highly improved clones, and then we have uh, uh, plant produced large number of such planting stock to the Drafting methods, right? So, as a forester, we can do it uh, at least by that uh, a phenotypic study. Uh, we can uh, find out the, the best uh, population and the best trees. And uh, finding out, we have to actually see what is the conservation status of those target species and their populations. Now, as I was telling you, Salacia reticulata is a species which is mostly. Cut. Uh, this is in Sanskrit, it is called Saptarangini. There is actually a bark which will be there as a layer of papers. Actually, that is being used for taking out that salacin and mangiferin. There are two chemicals which are available in that species that is being extracted and exported outside, mostly used for the diabetic drugs. Right? Bombay, there is a, a special company which is called Salacin Company, is there. So, what I am trying to say is that species I take into consideration. Then I have to find out uh, the conservation status uh, of that particular species in the natural forest and what is the population size of that distribution plus the population size of that particular species. Right. And uh, then I have to try to find out uh, what best I can do to uh, uh, improve the conservation status, that the conservation requirements and uh, as I have told you, I have to work at two levels at the ecosystem level and at the population level. What best I can do, right? Dry deciduous forest is maybe a kind of ecosystem. For example, Western Ghat, maybe the moist, uh, uh, moist uh, deciduous or the uh, uh, what you call the uh, evergreen forest where the rainfall is quite high. Uh, and generally, they occur in the uh, embankment of the forest uh, uh, nalas, uh, uh, they will be generally found. So what best I can try to do with regards to this uh, uh, population and at that ecosystem level. And then I have to identify the uh, appropriate conservation measures. And uh, as I have told you that uh, we will implement all those things and then the uh, provision of, uh, as I told, uh, the specific guidelines for the management uh, and the. Now, uh, these are the basic steps what uh, you are supposed to do uh, in the GRM uh, uh, practice. Uh, uh, 
prioritizations uh, of the species to be conserved uh, for the different states, as I told you, it, it, it's to be done uh, mostly by the state forest department because they are the custodian of the uh, forest resources available. Uh, I don't mean to say that it is only the forest department. Even the trees outside the forest in the agroforestry system also, they now have not a large number of variations because people have started doing different kind of uh, uh, cultivation methods, different types of clones, breedings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So agroforestry system also could be a very good area of GRM processes, right? Uh, when you are actually <clears throat> Uh, finalizing the number of species. These are certain criteria right. I'm trying to say current local importance and then the economic value uh, because uh, some of these species uh, they are actually required for the subsistence of the local population in those rural areas and the ecological uh, and geographical consideration such as the status in typical stands, uh, geographical range wherever it occurs and the capacity of the natural I can tell you number of species uh, uh, of, uh, I'm sure that in other states also it will be there, where the population size is confined to only a dozen of plants uh, available in that country, right? Uh, and sometimes uh, there are certain species which are uh, endemic species. For example, in Thermala area, uh, you find a large number of species, like there is one, uh, uh, Australia, Ovalifolia, Shoria, Chalura, for example, the Cycus bedomei. These are some of the species of those areas uh, which are very less in number and only confined to that particular area of the uh, Sestachalam uh, range of uh, that Eastern Ghat. Uh, of, uh, and the current conservation st status of that species and their population may be used as an indicator for prioritization. So you might have heard of a word called uh, uh, RET species, rare, endangered, and threatened. So for example, Cycus bedome, which is actually a cycus of these uh, Thirmala hills, or I can give one Cycus perica, which is actually a very few number of trees are there uh, in the Shrikakulam district uh, of Andhra Pradesh, right? And uh, so what I am trying to uh, focus on this uh, this house is the, uh, what is actually the uh, threat status of that particular species and what is the conservation status of that species and their populations that can be also taken as an indicator for prioritization. If conservation status is good, then maybe a little less importance may be given for the further action. Say for example, I, uh, uh, I, <clears throat> I will give a species like uh, uh, your uh, Terminalia bilirica, Anogaceous latifolia. Wherever you find these species, I'll give another very good species <coughs> like Alpegia odoratissima, which is called the Shilon rojo. One of the species whose wood uh, is very, very high and uh, which looks just like that of the red sanders. And they are actually. Uh, what you call mixed with the uh, these rojoots uh, uh, timber. So that particular species occurs from Indo-Gangetic plain to down south to the Kerala. Wide variation and wide distribution. So why should I take that species uh, into my conservation uh, when it is available in almost all uh, other, uh, uh, all uh, uh, kind of uh, environmental conditions. <coughs> Now, after that, we'll do that exploration and documentations. A lot of, as I told you, field work is required and the preparation of the eco distribution map of the various species. After finalizing one particular species and then uh, the compact viable population, I will have to try to uh, kind of prepare a map which will give me some idea that is the stratification by ecological donation. And as I told you, the threat assessment studies of various species is uh, the shortlist uh, which are the priority species uh, or the RET, rare, endangered, and threatened species. And uh, I have to act actually uh, really document what are the various drivers of, of erosion of the genetic diversity in that particular area for that particular species. So I told you 
like uh, Salacea is one species I told you to a large extent they are being cut. Like I will give you another example of Sterculia urens gumcaraya, or for example, the Boswellia serrata of the Madhya Pradesh, which is being tapped uh, uh, for that uh, uh, gum uh, collections, uh, which is used in number of tropical buckets. So I have to actually identify what are those drivers of erosion of genetic diversity, because unscientific tapping, now it has been seen in case of Stoculia urens, the population size uh, has come down drastically because uh, they are not producing uh, the viable seeds and uh, not much of flowering and slowly, slowly the tree actually. And uh, one of the major uh, reason for uh, uh, that population shrinkage is, one as I told you is that inbreeding because of the uh, fragmentation or the population, lesser population size, uh, the inbreeding occurs and which uh, reduces the hybrid vigor of that particular species and uh, a regeneration also uh, this fruit setting and the seed uh, germination also comes down. Similarly, the regeneration also is uh, of the important which contributes towards uh, building up uh, of uh, a particular uh, species. And uh, some of these basic questions when you are fixing uh, these species, because uh, why I'm giving so much uh, focus is that even ICFRE, they have listed down uh, so many species. Now, who will do that work on so many species? Because each individual species has got its own requirement. So try to, and they are now probably, if you see this South India, if you see this North India, FRI has got certain list. For example, APRI has got certain, the Jodhpur Center has got certain list. Ranchi has got certain list. Jorat has got certain list. If I put all the list together, the number will be coming uh, not less than 500. And we do that type of work. So therefore, kindly think over whether uh, we can reduce that uh, number of species uh, to do similar kind of uh, work as we are thinking of. Uh, so these are some of the basic questions uh, I thought that I, uh, because this comes to my mind, so therefore I am, our potentially important populations are at the high risk. As I told you, some of these species, which are in very, very large number, I gave the example of Albigia odora tissue, which are in very, very large number, is actually that population is at under high risk. And uh, how well protected are remaining populations? Means, the other populations of other species, they are, how well they are protected. Two protected remaining population adequately cover the geographical, ecological, and genetic variants where the species are. So for example, if I am talking of this Albigia odoratissima, as I told you that it occurs throughout the country, that these populations, whether if I take actually some of the seeds from these populations, just for example, seeds from those populations, I have got 20 populations, I collect those uh, seeds uh, from those 20 populations. Uh, per population minimum 10 trees I will take, I will collect those uh, seeds from those 10 trees of that population. And like that, uh, 20 such, uh, 20, uh, such uh, uh, populations I will collect uh, uh, the seeds. Right? maintaining their identity. And I must ask this question, whether they have, they actually adequately cover the total geographical locations where this species is, right? So therefore, then only what questions you have to ask is that whether the intraspecific genetic variations, uh, these seeds which I am collecting, uh, are they representing that or not? Then in such case, more and more such uh, uh, populations have to be think, uh, thought, uh, taken into consideration. Because when you are uh, trying to find out these populations, then you have to be very careful. Are two different populations you are mixing because of uh, inadequate, uh, uh, what you call, examining that populations at the different levels? So this is uh, uh, one of the most uh, important uh, ultimately, the baseline is whatever genetic uh, material you are collecting in the form of seed or in the form of uh, vegetative uh, uh, propagation unit, they must cover all, they must capture all the 
very specific variants uh, of that particular species. And what are the future trends or risks of that particular species? Whether climate change has got some role, change that species to a large extent. Uh, harvesting, for example, uh, selective harvesting of that particular species, as I told you, whether legal or illegal, that Salacia or the Boswellia or this uh, uh, Sterculia urens, whether that selective harvesting uh, uh, will make that particular population at risk. Now, these questions have to be addressed uh, using the best available uh, information on the past and present geographical distribution, which you can see from the different records of the forest department. And also by interacting with the local populations wherever it is occurring and prevailing utilization pattern in terms of direct use in the form of harvesting, planting, and breeding, and likely occurrence uh, in concurrent currently protected areas. I am prime and again giving the protected areas is that in the protected area, the uh, protection of that particular species chances is simply high. But if there are greater uh, uh, protection measures which are being uh, uh, taken uh, back. Now, after doing that uh, criteria of the species and selected, you, uh, three species, you can divide it into three different uh, uh, groups. That is species for which no measures that might be undertaken would help the conservation. Like I gave this example of Anogaceous latifolia. Wherever you find uh, Anogaceous latifolia is being uh, uh, found uh, uh, mainly as uh, a dominant species of uh, what you call the dry uh, deciduous forest area. I will give another example, Jailia jailocarpa, right? That's uh, uh, also found in a uh, number of uh, uh, states in the country. So is that, uh, which are such species which are coming into these categories, which doesn't require much of these uh, uh, measures to be undertaken uh, uh, which will help to increase their conservation. And uh, there are certain species that will survive even without your uh, intervention. Without even uh, the management, uh, there are certain species which are so hardy uh, uh, and which are so stable uh, that they will survive. And species that will survive, it's been So these categories subsequently do it, uh, becomes much uh, more uh, easy for you uh, to take up uh, further actions. That's why I have written it is important that this last of the species survive, it's stably um, managed. Uh, they have to be identified and resources because resource in terms of financial and the manpower, it is uh, uh, very less. Uh, uh, therefore, uh, uh, these limited resources can be allotted uh, for that uh, prioritized species. And uh, after species level decisions are made, it is the population level that we are really interested in conserving. And there where uh, you find uh, uh, what you call uh, that particular species having so many populations, uh, and then we have to find out which are such populations, as I told you in my earlier slide. And then within that, uh, what is the genetic variations uh, between two geographical regions, uh, that's important uh, to find out. Uh, as I told you that either you can do that morphological and metric characters in the field trials. For example, IFGTB has done on that eucalyptus clones. Uh, they have described actually uh, by examining different clones morphologically, right? That is metric characters. And then they have done different kind of field trials. Then the biochemical and molecular markers using laboratory technique in order to find out the genetic variation within the subjects. So that's only possible in uh, some of these uh, good laboratories, which forest department do not have, maybe some of the ICFRE, and maybe some of these universities and other institutes. Now, having told all those kinds of things, what are the strategies? Uh, you can have your uh, of opinion, but this is what uh, we thought that this Yes, uh, preferably <clears throat> the institute conservation is one of these uh, very good uh, technique uh, in the field that wild populations having uh, identified that this is having more diverse species, more interspecific variations. You conserve that institute conservation uh, institute uh, of uh, 
that species there because uh, it is easier to do that uh, instead of doing an ex situ where you have to take off it. Right? Uh, but for the domesticated species, you can uh, on farm conservation of traditional varieties of uh, different agricultural crops also can be attempted. And they are being done also. Right? So for the forest trees, wild species in in situ inside the forest, uh, you can do that kind of uh, and molecular genetic studies, molecular markers, and modeling simulations are carried out on many forestry species, in particular institutes of ICFR. Not all ICFR institutes have got uh, that kind of uh, uh, expertise or the instruments to do it. And uh, as a forest department person, uh, we can actually locate some of these uh, uh, some of these high uh, diversity wise for that particular species. We can have something called the preservation plots or the conservation stands, mostly in the protected areas, based on the diversity of the species. And uh, the I have used one word called nuclear zone of diversity. That is maximum number of allies existing species. So, for example, a species will be there. Uh, there will be uh, uh, number of allies, allies will be found in that particular species. So this, which is called the nuclear zone of diversity, the idea is to preserve the maximum interspecies. So as a forest depot, actually earlier the ICFRE used to have some preservation plot. Now most of these areas uh, are either lost, back off, or they have been uh, destroyed. So if you can actually restart that activities, uh, have a kind of conservation stand inside that wild area, uh, it will be much better. Uh, and uh, so far as the ex situ conservation strategy is called, uh, is concerned, uh, we have got the static conservation activities are characterized by the fact uh, that uh, uh, these things are uh, good for the targets for conservation. Uh, and uh, uh, the simple thing what uh, the forest department can do is that uh, some of the ex situ conservation like botanical gardens, seed gene banks at many sites. So for example, if you are seeing, uh, I have actually tried to do it in Hyderabad. Uh, in a sense, basically, I take a lot of interest in, uh, that's my passion, go around the forest, the taxonomy, identification of species and all. That. There are certain species uh, uh, I have seen in the eastern parts of the Paderu Visakhapatnam hills, you don't find many of these, uh, uh, the population size is very less. And there are no three generations also available, only five or six trees were there of a particular species. So what I have uh, done is that uh, uh, since there is no germination of that particular seeds, there are a lot of problems. I did what you call it uh, as uh, uh, I do. I did the air layering of the trees by constructing a pendal there, and uh, we did the air layering, and then we tried to transport that material to the Hyderabad, and then we have planted it. There. Now the question is, Hyderabad climate is uh, very hot and dry. How how to make it survive? So what I did is that two acre of land we have made uh, some kind of uh, uh, so lawn grass lawn. In the morning. Yes. And then after that, uh, after that, uh, uh, I have tried to plant those things. Pardon? See from this particular. So those are the kind of things we have tried to introduce there. So forest department can uh, uh, different places do that kind of strategy in order to shape those species before they go for the total extinctions, right? First of all, I have to <clears throat> conserve that species before it goes for, uh, before it goes to the total extinction. In vitro conservation, so uh, by maintaining the cell lines under in vitro cultures, which are being done for many of the agricultural and horticultural crops, and also the floricultural crops. Uh, for the forest trees, I believe uh, they are being done uh, uh, in some of these, uh, for example, IHGTB, I know, and FRI, I believe it is being done. And wherever their importance is being felt, uh, they can be actually taken and uh, 
produced uh, the plants from that uh, cell line culture. And uh, collection of seeds of diverse populations, which is one of the best, but then most of the rainforest species will be recalcitrant seeds in a sense uh, where moisture content is very high. Like for recalcitrant means anywhere where the longevity of uh, the seeds will not be there, why will be not? Rush, rush karna hoga, sir. Time hoga aapka, sir. Uh, yeah, 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 I will. Uh, I will end. This is my last slide. Uh, okay. So, such kind of uh, uh, populations also, I will, the seeds also, I will try to find out uh, how actually to do this kind of uh, storage methods. So, and uh, last slide is uh, that All India Coordinated Research Program. I have got not much idea about how many number of species they have uh, identified by the different states. This is some um, South India, 95 species they have prioritized, but this is an old information. Similarly, you have got in Northeast, Rajasthan, Gujarat, UP, and all that, uh, that I think can be collected. Uh, uh, the other uh, speakers also, they can throw some light on. So I conclude my talk here, and uh, thank you, MP Singh Sir, uh, for giving me this uh, opportunity to uh, interact with the uh, training officers. Thank you.